So let's move on to make LFS system bootable. So it describes there about making a recovery floppy, um, which yeah might be an idea, but we've got several other versions of LFS to boot from to use as a recovery. So um, I won't bother. Used to use that quite a lot. Um, just creates a recovery grub um, disk to boot from if the grub installation doesn't work. Um, now, before we do these instructions, we've got a problem in that when we installed grub, we copied a few files into the boot directory, but the boot partition wasn't mounted. So if you look, there's um, nothing about grub. Well, there is actually. Uh, right, okay, that's when I was testing this. So I'll get rid of that. And we can do it all again from scratch. Right, yeah, so there's nothing about grub. If I unmount uh, boot and then look at boot, you can see there's that grub directory there. So what I'm going to do first of all is just back that up, just out of uh, precaution. Um, probably don't need to do it, but I will do just in case. And I'll put that in the root directory and call it boot grub. And that's, um, that'll do actually. I'll put four. So I don't think I'll be needing this, but there's no harm in doing that. So boot should be empty again because we are going to mount the partition there. So I now need to recreate that directory. Um, boot grub. And I'll just check the permissions on that. Make sure it's identical to what was there before. It should be because I don't think there's anything special. Um, done to it. So where are we? Here we are. We've got 755 there and 755 in its own by root. Yep, so that's fine. So then I need to copy the um, stage files from user share grub i386. So the stage um, one and two into boot grub. And also I need to copy the, well, it seems that I didn't have the E2FS stage 1.5 there, but um, I'll copy it anyway. I obviously missed that when I was doing this first time around, um, but it did boot okay, so maybe it means that the command line wouldn't work uh, some of the operations on the file system wouldn't work perhaps so i'll copy that as advised by the instructions um now i'll be able to run grub um, as it says here so it's just examining all the devices um, all the storage devices on the machine and then we've got the grub prompt so what I'll do here is copy and paste this command here but because the root of the boot partition is not at that position it's actually at that position so as it says there the um, HDA1 is designated HD00 so because our partition for boot is the second partition i.e. HDA2 I need to increment the partition number by one. So then that becomes HD zero for the first disk, which is HDA and partition two, which makes that a one. So that tells it that I'm selecting HDA two. I then want to install grub onto the boot sector of the hard disk. So this will overwrite Lilo. Lilo won't be the boot um, 
bootloader anymore, it'll be Grub. And you can see that's worked fine, or it's reportedly worked fine. We won't know until we actually test it. So now I need to create a menu.list oops, a menu.list configuration file to tell Grub what uh, systems to boot from. So I'll just edit that now. And unfortunately, what I need to do here now is to add in all of the partitions um, that we've got in all the systems. So I'll start by adjusting the one that we're building at the moment. So obviously this needs to be changed again. So that needs to be a one. And the kernel's not in boots because we're on a partition. Boots are partitioned, so we need to get rid of that so that it boots off the root of that partition. And I need to tell it that this is HDA8. So that, that should be enough to boot LFS5. But as I say, I'm going to put in um, the remaining configuration for the other systems that are on the disk. So I'm going to copy, oops, copy these three lines and paste them once, twice, thrice and four times for all of the different systems I've got. And just put a gap between all of them. So the next one's going to be the currently running system, which is LFS4. This obviously remains the same because the boot partition will never change. Oh, and the one thing I need to change is the name of the kernel for our currently run running or oh, the new system. Sorry, VM Linux dash two dot four dot two two dash LFS dash five dot zero. This one will be um, similar. But it'll be LFS four and two dot four dot one nine. This one will be LFS one, and the name of that kernel is LFS dash one dot zero hyphen kernel. Um, oh yeah, the root of this one will be seven. And the root of this one will be HDA6. Uh, then I've got SUS 6.1. And that's just called VM Linux, that kernel. And that's on HDA5. And lastly, I've still I've got still got this DOS partition with nothing on it, but um, I'll add that in anyway. So this is um, actually a bit different. Uh, the way we do this is we specify the root of the partition um, that we wish to. Oh, sorry, the yeah, the root of the partition we wish to boot from. So root no verify. So I imagine it. I don't know exactly, but I imagine it's telling Grub not to check the file system at this partition. And then chain loader just immediately loads the first sector on that on that partition and that disk. So it's basically looking at the um, boot sector. Um, actually, not sure if I've written down a. Something wrong there. Um, I think this should be the sector of the disk. Oh yes, that's right. Yes, it is the first. It is the first partition. That's right. So that's why that's a zero. Yeah. So because the DOS partitions, the first partition. That's why that's a zero. That is correct. So that should be okay. Uh, just have a quick scan and make sure everything looks good. Partitions look good, the names look good as far as I can tell. Let's just have a quick look at the kernel. So that was the SUS kernel. Yep, that's the Linux and Scratch 1 kernel, the Linux and Scratch 4, and the Linux and Scratch 5. So that does look okay. 
So that should be it to, um, as far as configuration is concerned. There's one other thing that, again, hasn't been mentioned in the LFS book. Um, I'm not sure if it does actually work or not. So I won't put it in at the moment, but there's no resolve.conf. Um, as you can see there, so I'll find out if that works when I boot. 